storm clouds, a lone figure stands silhouetted against the ancient walls of Castle Ravenloft. We'll begin with the spin, traveling in a world of my creation. What was he has a look of power and of madness. Rumbling thunder pounds the castle spires. The winds howling increases as Strahd turns his gaze back to the village. A party of adventurers has just entered his domain. Anything you want to do it. Want to change the world. There's nothing to Another lightning flash rips through the darkness, its thunder echoing through the castle towers. But Strahd is gone. Only the howling of the wind, perhaps a lone wolf fills the midnight air. You'll be free if you truly Master of Ravenloft is having guests for dinner. Fighted. Everybody, glad to see you again. We're back, Vito, uh, Galen, and we've got a couple new faces at the table. We have Miss Erica playing Emika, the aberrant mind sorcerer, and we have Ethan playing Eros, the Leonin fighter. So uh, I'll give you all a minute to uh, introduce yourselves real quick before you before we uh, kick things off. Ethan, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, like you said, I'm playing Eros Moontooth, the laying in uh, fighter. I'm going mostly ranged with it, uh, going arcane archer for my subclass. So not something I've used before, but looking forward to it so uh yeah all right fantastic and erica are you there you want to introduce um, yourself i am playing a sorcerer i uh, i rolled a dice and i landed on this subclass so i don't know what it does yet but i will figure it out sounds like a fun way to do things all Love right chaos. indeed indeed so, last time we met, the party uh, ventured through uh, the bowels of Castle Ravenloft after being trapped there by Lord Strahd himself. Uh, they encountered the grisly remains of many poor souls who had ventured through there before them and met a deranged mongrel folk man who claimed to serve Lord Strahd and was otherwise unconsequential. They were transported throughout the castle at the behest of Lord Strahd before stumbling upon a crypt where rulers of Barovia had been buried. And in this crypt, they found most notably the family of Lord Strahd, his mother, father, and brother, Sergei von Zarovich. Inside the tomb of Sergei, the party managed to retrieve the Sun Sword, a holy weapon of pure light that will allow them to maybe turn the tides against the forces of dread across Barovia. Afterward, they investigated the tombs of the mother and father, and Artie decided to take a bit of a souvenir, a burial shawl from the tomb of Ravenovia, 
Von Zorovich, uh, Strahd's mother, he took this burial shawl and was immediately informed that uh, he had cast offense to Lord Strahd, who transported them once more. And um, now, again, they feel that pushing feeling and pulling feeling. It's as though they're being pushed forward and pulled backward at the same time. They can't really comprehend what's going on, but by the time everyone opens their eyes, they've they've arrived upon a familiar site, a clearing in a woodland overlooking a lake. A thick, thick, dense fog surrounding them, and everybody seems to be shaking themselves awake. Uh, and as the fog clears, an unfamiliar sight uh, a large man, well over six feet, with the mane and fangs and claws of a lion. He stands wearing full armor, uh, like uh, like leather armor with some chainmail in there, and um, and and an iron pauldron with a lion's head crest emblazoned on it, and uh, a small a small human woman a sorcerer, a mage of some kind, wearing regal purple robes and a large wizard's hat. The group finds themselves standing in front of a tower, a tall tower with uh, a wagon sitting out front. They, they come to an old mountain, a lake enclosed by misty woods and rocky bluffs. Thick fog creeps across the dark, still waters, and the trail ends at a grass-covered causeway that stretches a hundred yards across the lake to a flat, marshy island with a stone tower on it. The tower is, like many things here in Barovia, old and decrepit, with collapsing scaffolds clinging to one side where a large gash has split the wall. Time-worn griffin statues, their wings and flanks covered with moss and dirt perch atop buttresses that support the walls parked near the base of a tower within sight of the entrance is a barrel topped wagon spattered with mud the tower stands 80 feet tall and seems to have four floors the fog only recedes far enough for you to see that there is a woodland out to your south and allowing you to move toward the tower. So you are free to do as you wish. Uh, Artie, uh, Artie, you all right? Yeah, I think so. Do you see Alora? Uh, no, maybe she got put somewhere else. Shoot. I'll uh, reach into my bag and see if I still have the veil or the the scarf or whatever. You do still have the veil all balled up in your in one of your hands. Uh, well, uh, let's hope gaining his ire didn't come at a cost. Yeah, I have no idea where we are. And then. Doros will kind of look over and notice the other two and just kind of nudge Artie in the side without saying anything. And kind of gesture over to him. Uh, hello? Hello. You come by out here often? No, this is the first time that I've been here. Uh... Oh, well, good news. It's also my first time here. Are you from this land? Uh, no. I'm actually looking for my missing sister. Sorry to hear that. Um, Wait, did that sound convincing? Because I'm not looking for my missing sister. 
Oh, um, yeah, then go ahead and roll me Deception. Where do I roll it? Do I do it beyond? Yeah, in D&D Beyond. Oh, one second. No worries. Seven. Um, Artie, you would be able to pick up that she's lying, but uh, with no knowledge of why she would lie or why it would be significant, uh, you probably wouldn't think anything of it. We're going to forego that role as I'm rummaging through my bag and not paying attention. Okay. Uh, uh, looking over at the two people, I'll I'm guessing my attention would probably go to the giant lion man. Yep. Yeah. So Eros will sort of step forward and say, uh, Hello, my name is Eros. Pay no mind to my traveling companion. Um, I, I am simply here as a traveler. Um, I do not know why they have come, but... I want you to know we mean no harm. Well. Uh. Do you know who Strahd von Zurovich is? I can't say I'm familiar with the name, but sounds like an important person. I guess you really aren't from here. Neither are we. Oh. My name is, is Dorleth. Uh, and looking at him, you see um, a humanoid, about six foot two-ish uh tall wearing uh like gray and black uh like traveling cloak uh his skin is like this off color purple uh and you kind of see like just at the under edge of his hood is kind of like a uh a hag's crown so like horns that kind of like intertwine uh a little bit um has like a rapier on their side and like a little knapsack Uh, do you remember where you last were before you were here? Well, I've traveled all over, but, um, no, not quite. Right before this, I... No, I can't remember. It's a bit fuzzy. Yeah, yeah the fog does that. It's damn fog. There's mist. It's everywhere. It's like it has a mind of its own. I'll kind of boop Doralith in the calf with the wing of my uh, crossbow and say, hey, speak for yourself. <laughs> um, and uh, stepping out from behind him, still kind of un unsure and weary, um, is a nervous looking old man. Um, not really wearing anything indicative of being from another land. Um, you notice a few different uh, pouches and pockets along his belt with different uh, bottles and alchemical reagents and things. Um, he holds a crossbow with both hands um, and is kind of nervously looking around to see if there's anything nearby. Uh, my guy's uh, from Barovia. Are you worried 
about the something there, friend. Something chasing you? Well, the aforementioned uh, Strahd, we, uh, more correctly, I may have uh, drawn his ire, and then we found ourselves here. So, being deposited here, I just wonder where here is. Pretty, you don't recognize this tower? Can I roll like history or something? Or would would my character know anything? Forgive me, what was the question? Should I roll history or yeah. would my character know anything about the lands this close to the castle? Yeah, your character would know. Uh, you are in an area near, and let me rem remind myself of the name. A an area called Lake Baratok. It's the smaller of the two large, uh, or the three large lakes in the uh, region. You know that you are far to the east northeast of the castle, or west northwest rather. Are you we anywhere near Falaki? Uh, no, I don't yes. think we're in Kansas anymore. Ah. Well, it seems like the the mist is doing what it does and telling us where it wants us to go. And Doroth will kind of just brain their head up and look up at the tower. Then look back at everyone else. Well, if you'd like to join us, uh, how much else? Taking us anywhere else. You're more than welcome. Do I still have my raven? I'll go ahead and pull out my little bell that doesn't make any noise and shake it. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with it? Uh, I'm just going to have it kind of patrol upwards and around. Right. Not so much the tower yet, just around us. The only thing of note is the large purple wagon that seems to be locked from the inside. I was looking for Laura mainly, but I'm getting an idea of the lay of the land. Okay. It comes back and lands on my shoulder. I'll give it a little treat. It is, uh... Of course, nice meeting you, and yes, I think I would like to join you. As I see, there may not be another way out of this, this land here. It was, uh, Eros, you said? Yes, Eros Moon to at your service. And he sort of gives a, uh, doesn't fully bow, but sort of nods his head. It's, uh, nice to meet you. Like I said, I'm Dorleth, uh, Shadow Gazer. Um, who is your, your traveling companion? Well, hello. Let them introduce themselves. Oh, uh, my name is Amica. Pleasure to meet you, Amica. 
How do I spell your name? Uh, D O R L I T H. Do you two have the link for Albert? Yeah. Um, I've never used it, so I'm not quite sure how to move my token. <laughs> Actually, it's quick and drag. Um, it's not nope. working. Other one. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's just moving the map. Do they have prop, uh, permissions? There's no reason they wouldn't. <laughs> uh, their characters aren't locked or anything. They should be able to just click and move them. Yep, it's that was me. Moving the map. Yeah. Huh. Try uh, try using right click maybe. Oh, there we go. He moved a little bit. That was no, me. I think I did that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's your pointer. Are you? You should be left clicking on it, right? Yeah, yeah. You said try the other, so that's why I was doing. That's the right click. This is. And so, if you left click on your token and try and move it, what happens? Nothing. It moves the map. Okay, really quickly along the toolbar. Do you have a toolbar in the right? Yeah, yeah. Can you make sure that the hand is clicked? Yeah, that's what's selected. Oh. Okay. Let me just try refreshing real quick. Yeah, that's weird. I've never heard of that before. There we go. Yeah, I just had a refresh, I guess. Real quick, what is everybody's colors? I'm yellow. Red, please. Purple. DM is pink. <laughs> Never have I been more afraid of pink. <laughs> mm, yes. You will grow to fear the color pink. Emika, hey, which color are you? I have no idea. If you right click and drag, <laughs> you can use your pointer. You're red. Uh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Is there a way for me to switch so we're not the same? Yeah, let me do that. I'll be green then. Sounds good. So, before you stands this tower and this large purple, what looks like a uh, like a traveling merchant's cart, but it's got a set of stairs leading up onto it like a porch, like a building has, and there are no horses anywhere to be found. I assume this is uh, neither of your wagons? No. I've never seen it before. Dorleth would kind of walk around and... Is there a door at the back where the stairs lead up? What was that, uh, Dorleth? Is there a door where the stairs lead up in the back? Yep. Okay, uh, would like to try the door and see if it's locked or unlocked. Or, it I want to knock locked. first. Okay. And nobody answers when you knock. Okay. Well. Into the tower, then? Do you want to call out? Hello? Is there, uh, is there anyone in, in this wagon? We mean you no harm. There's no answer. I don't think they're home, Marty. Well, we could check the tower and on our way out, I could, and I reach into my pocket and pull out that thief's kit. Mm. You gonna try and pick the lock? No, um... On our way out of the tower, I figure somebody might be, be inside the tower, and I don't want to be caught. Indeed. All right.
Well, as you approach, you see that the tower door is made of iron, and it has no visible hands or hinges. In the middle of the door is a large embossed symbol. The, uh, the symbol is a connected series of lines with eight stick figures set around it. And carved into the lintel above the door is a word. Kazan, spelled K-H-A-Z-A-N. I'll send you a picture of the image now. That's the wrong damn thing. <laughs> Copy image. I know this is inconvenient because we just started, but can I take a quick five? Yep, do what you gotta do. That is the door. That looks like the most friendly door to knock on. Go for it, big guy. If you say so, Eros will go and, and knock on the door. There is no response. What uh what language is that name in? Or that, that word, I guess? In common, it's spelled K H A Z A N. Thorleth kind of looking at it will look where the lines are and at the uh 10 o'clock position. Okay. They'll kind of hold that pose. Does anything happen? Yes. And it then he begins will... to glow. Okay. And then he'll switch to the six o'clock position. And then to the 12, then to the 9, and then to the 5, to the 2, to the 7, and then in big dramatic theatrics will end on the 3 o'clock position. Mm. Does anyone here speak Draconic? Yes, I do. I speak Draconic. Okay, so in Draconic... You hear, you hear a voice uh, from seemingly inside the door announce, uh, Welcome home, Lord Van Richten. And the door opens for you, revealing an interior <clears throat> um, with a flagstone floor. It's strewn with debris and the few old crates stand near the west wall. A torn curtain to the south partially obstructs your uh, view of the tower vestibule. There's a five foot square indentation in the center of the room containing four pulleys attached to taut iron chains that stretch up through a similarly sized hole in the wooden ceiling. Standing next to the chains are four tall clay golems presumably left there to operate what looks like a primitive elevator. Congratulations, my friend. Your strange dance has opened up the door. Shall we head in? Might as well. Um, I, I might warn you that the name 
Van Richten, we've met him. Uh, he's kind of a performer, but not quite. I don't know. It's it's a it's hard to explain. Um, I would be wary. He's he wasn't really in his right mind when we met him. So if this is his tower, well, best be careful. Uh, DM, for the people that weren't in in the game session, can you tell us a little bit about our last interaction? Yes, Rudolf Van Richten is a entirely sane man who pretends to be insane in order to uh, uh, allow suspicion to pass over him. He used to be a uh, renowned uh, monster hunter who would kill vampires and other horrible creatures uh, before his son was kidnapped and killed. He uh, snapped afterward and sicked a horde of zombies on the bandits that did it, killing every last one of them and having them eaten alive. Afterward, he threw himself into a depression, drowning it only with drinks at random taverns throughout Barovia. Now he uh, hides away in part of Barovia, just uh, trying to survive for as long as he can. I'll, uh... Like, uh sure, good. I'll mention to Dorlith that he might want to cover up the sun sword. Uh, Dorlith has a sun sword hidden. The, the, um, the hilt is underneath his traveling cloak. Okay. Yep. After you, new friends. Right. Oh my god, why does it keep grabbing your token when I'm not even hovering over it? Oh, it's so annoying. Yeah. Oh my. Harris will start to head in tower. Oh my gosh. Mm. Does anyone know how to fix that? Why it keeps grabbing someone else's token when I'm not even like clicking on it or hovering over it? It must just be somebody else moving the token. No, like I'm not like that's me moving it for sure, and I'm not even whatever. It's oh, fine. I, I just I don't know what to tell you then, bud. Sorry. Isn't sure. As you uh, enter in, the four clay golems all lock eyes on you and uh, acknowledging your entrance, they look upward and begin pulling on the um, the iron chains that extend upward and then come back down, bringing down a hefty wooden platform that uh, one could assume is to be used as an elevator. Out of the construction. What was that? Can Artie kind of take note of the construction and pay a little bit, bit of attention for a moment before we get on? Yes. Uh, what is it he's looking for? Um, just noting that they're not quite like um, my creature. So. Hey, the Blooded like Baron. Thank you so much for the follow. Were, I appreciate you nature or whatever Very much. the role might be to ascertain Heck yeah stick around and enjoy the chaos yeah go ahead and roll me arcana uh, 27 27 <laughs> yeah that'll do it um <laughs> these are clay golems and uh it doesn't take a genius to know that these are not naturally occurring um, they were summoned, presumably by uh, Rudolf Van Richten, or whoever else has inhabited the tower since he was last here. Oh, um, 
only way in is up, I suppose. Mm. Doroth will step on the platform. As you step onto it, the clay golems uh, begin pulling on the chains, uh, activating a pretty basic pulley system at the top of the tower um, and heaving you up in a bit of a janky, shaky manner uh, up onto the second floor. It's covered in dust and cobwebs, and the, the wooden floor is badly rotted and in some places partially collapsed. As you uh, continue upward, you enter onto the third floor, where uh, time and elements have all but destroyed the uh, remaining chamber, leaving a gash in the northwest wall and a slimy black mildew on the walls. Uh, the wooden floor is completely rotted and has begun to fall away in multiple places. And as you enter up onto the top floor near the uh, near the peak of the tower, unlike the levels below, this room shows signs of recent habitation. Although the place reeks of mold and mildew, it has plenty of regular comforts, including a cozy bed, a desk with a matching chair, bright tapestries, and a large iron stove with plenty of wood to feed it. The light enters the room through arrow slits, as well as through dirt-caked windows with broken shutters. Other features of the room include a standing suit of armor and a wooden chest. Old wooden rafters bend under the weight of the roof tower, but it has somehow remained intact after all this time. Mounted to the, ma to the rafters in the middle of the room are a pulley which hang around iron chains, that support the tower's elevator platform. Orleth will step off uh, the platform and uh, have an eye around. Once he steps off, is, does he see like there's a, um, a bell or like something to call to get it back down? Mm, when you when Dorla thinks about uh, going back down the elevator, it seems that the uh, the clay golems respond immediately, uh, pulling the elevator back up to him. Right. So Dorla thinks about sending it down to the first floor, and so it does. <clears throat> All right, um, Eros will hop on and hope it takes him up. And it does. You arrive a minute or two after Dorlith does up on the fourth floor. I just moved you there. I know you said it was kind of shaky. Yeah, um, kind of shaky. It's not a comfortable ride up, but it, it, does it appear that it would support uh, my weight along with uh, one of our new friends? Likely not. Okay. Earth will think the elevator back down. <laughs> While that's happening, oh. can um, Eros sort of look around the room, see if there's anything important looking on this uh, this desk here? Or... Find his bed, maybe. Go ahead and roll me investigation. All right. 14. You uh, find in the corner here next to the bed a wooden chest uh, 
your intuition tells you that there may be something of value in it and once you manage to pop it open you find the head of a Vistani bandit he, you know because he has a small V tattoo on the remainder of his neck Ooh. good lord <laughs> um. Yeah, smells. Harris will pick it up and show it to Dorlith and say, "Uh, does this mean anything to you?" Um, DM, does Dorlith recognize that Bastani? No. But, um, <laughs> go ahead and roll me perception. Okay. So I'm good. Let's go. Ah, crap. <laughs> Nine. What are we looking at? Nine? Well, it doesn't take much to notice when the head comes up out of the box, a small piece of parchment with ink on it, labeled and presumably labeling the head. The man who stole Piccolo from me. Oh. Uh, Eros. Um, I think that guy deserved what he got. He stole a monkey. Uh. Uh, back where I'm from, uh, you don't behead someone for stealing, but fair enough. They do it differently around here. That's, I guess that's what they do here, but. The monkey was really important to Ben Richten. I don't know why he would keep the head. Like I said, he's uh, kind of scattered. <laughs> right. Has the elevator come back down yet? Uh, yes, you're able to go up whenever you like. I'll go ahead and motion that uh, I'll stay down. Okay. Take position against the back wall to make sure that nobody comes up. Hmm. Almost as if on cue, when you do that, a, um, a familiar face comes running from the woods. Give me just a minute. Oh, jeez, I don't have it. Give me just a second here. I guess I never re uh, redid this token after I got my new computer. Hmm. Okay, so running from the woods, you see a familiar face, but she's hurt. It's Esmeralda from back in Kretz, uh, but her leather armor and clothing is tattered. Her her metal right leg is uh, dented and nearly destroyed, and the longsword in her right hand uh, seems to be uh, chipped and broken in multiple places. She's clearly been through a hell of a fight and she stumbles onto the doorstep just as you begin to uh, set up uh, Artie, she stumbles onto the doorstep in front of you and passes out um, immediately I'm going to have my bird take flight from the cart and do a quick circle and I'm going to ask Emma to help me uh, bring her in All right, and you'll take her where? Here? Just just inside the door, yeah. Mm. 
I'll begin does... trying. I'll be tr begin trying mending the leg. It works, and the leg is back in perfect condition. Make sure you mark it as cast. But um, the rest of her is still in bad shape. Does she have consciousness? Mm, she's in and out, not very coherent. She keeps mumbling about wolves. Okay. I'll go ahead and have the bit the bird uh, try to fly in one of the arrow slits of the top of the tower and call loudly. Okay, Dorleth, what would you uh, do when you see that? Uh, if his raven came in the arrow slit, um, probably, and called loudly, probably not hesitate to jump back on the platform or call it up and then jump back on the platform and then take it down. Arrows, I would assume you'd do the same thing. Yeah. We'll follow after. Unless All they can right. both go down at the same time. It seems like it's only big enough for one. But... It's only big enough for one. But by the time you both reach the bottom, um, and Artie has explained what happened, uh, her ramblings are made clear as a pack of wolves emerges from the tree line to the southeast led by two werewolves standing on their hind legs and a large man uh, leading them forward and calling out, Esmeralda! Where are you running to? You can't hide from us. Well, is going to reach over to Esmeralda and uh, all right, if there's going to be some kind of fight, we need you. And he's going to lay on hands for 20 points. 20 hit points? Yes. Okay. Am I allowed to move out of the doorway? Yeah. I, I don't know how I got into the doorway like this, but I don't want to be right in the front. Yeah, you can move your token. Go ahead. Orloth will think, um, just think into the ether, uh, close the door. Does that have any effect? No. I'm trying to drag, um, looking up at the second floor through a hole in the floor. Were there arrow slits up there? Yes. Okay. Or arrow slits pointing out on all the third, uh, second, third, and fourth floor. Okay. Eros, well, Eros will lean over to Dorleth and say, I'm going to assume that they're not friendly. Shall I we... wouldn't think so. Sometimes uh, taking the initiative is sort of helpful, no? And he pulls his bow out and had, like, was asking should I shoot him, basically, like, before they even do anything. I'm going to ask Esmeralda to engage in dialogue and bias some time while jumping on the elevator and trying to go up to the second floor. Esmeralda being uh, newly healed and being able to fight again, uh, she explains that they're not interested in talking. Uh, they were sent by Lord Strahd to kill her. He seems to be, uh, over the last day, he seems to be set on destroying anyone who might have any machinations of, of defeating him. Okay. So he, she's, she states that she's been attacked and that, uh, Lady Irina has been kidnapped. Oh no. Kidnapped, uh, Esmeralda, do you know where Irina is now? She says, 
You are absolutely not going to believe this. She was kidnapped by a bunch of ghosts who claim to serve an ancient silver dragon. Uh, that's a lot to unpack. Uh, let's unpack it upstairs. Come on. As Tell me when I am in a window spot. Uh, you can, yeah, you can be in a window spot. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. From the window, you can see as everybody's coming up, um, you can see the wolves seem to be uh, arranging themselves outside, trying to uh, surround you and in their uh, in their haste, they all seem to be bustling about trying to find a way to get at you, but their leader says uh, he shouts out up into the tower Esmeralda who is that in there with you bring them out so they can share your fate would Artie be under the understanding that the clay golems might consider us guests or at least possibly take some in instruction he could I mean yeah he could assume that but he could be wrong okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like think hearing that door lift can control the elevator up and down I'm gonna try to try to get the constructs to defend the tower if anyone comes inside how are you gonna do that the I'm clay golems were the ones really, that were really strong. doing it. They were they were Please. using they were pulling the 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 police. Right. But along with my Arcana check, I'm I'm just tr trying to think it really hard that they should defend their master's house. They do not respond. Okay. With voice or action. Oh, that's okay. Nobody's coming yet, so I'm hopeful. Are you guys coming up? Or if I kind of yelled down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Perhaps we'll follow after Emika. So what is your plan? What do you intend to do? Um, I would like to cast um, Eros. Are you still on the first floor? No, I went up. I would like to cast Grease. Okay. Grease? Nice. Yes. Okay. All right, where are you casting it at? Um, pretty much this area inside the tower, but on the first floor. Okay. All right, and that makes it what deck save to stay uh to stay standing when you pass through it. Uh, each creature standing in the area must succeed a deck save. That's if they're currently there. Um, a creature that enters the area or ends its turn there must also make another deck save. All right. In that case, I'll go ahead and have everybody roll initiative. Hey. Okay. Fourteen for arrows. Oh, I rolled on the wrong sheet. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm sorry, I'll take the seven. I clicked on my laptop, but the laptop was slow to roll, so I rolled on the phone thinking it wasn't going to. No worries, so you had a seven? Yes. Fifteen for me. Doorless, what'd you have? Uh, I had an eleven. And Emika, what did you have for initiative? Oh, 
right. In that case, Emika, you're first. What are you going to do? Do I have a visual on these guys down here? You can from any of the windows in the front. <laughs> any of the front windows, or if you were to go up to the upper floors, the diagonal windows would allow you to see them too. Okay, I'm going to go up to one of the windows, and I am... I'm going to try and detect his thoughts. The leader? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and mark detect thoughts as cast. Let me read that and see precisely what it does. The thoughts are reading the thoughts of certain creatures. You can focus on their mind. You should remember to search his thought. Okay, so initially when you uh, cast the tech thoughts, you uh, you get this mental image of just all these different brutal ways that are flying through this guy's mind of how he's going to kill Esmeralda when he gets his hands on her. Oh, that's terrible. Uh... Uh, so he really wants to kill her? Very much, yes. Uh, am I allowed to pry duper? What was that? Am I allowed to pry, pry duper? I... I'm sorry, I can't understand you. What was that? Try getting closer to your mic. Oh, sorry. Um, can I pry duper? Like, deeper into his mind? Um, yeah, that would take oh, an deeper. action. That would take an action. I think you've already used your action, so you'd have to do that on your next turn. Oh, okay. I'll move away from the window, and that's my turn. All right, then. In that case, we are on to... Uh, one of the wolves uh, moves quickly to get a little bit closer to the tower, and that'll be it. Leading us to Eros. What will you do? Um, Eros will also go up to one of the windows, and um, he will just he'll shoot at this uh, man in the middle. All right, you're gonna shoot with your longbow. Yeah, I'm not gonna do sharpshooter for this one. All right, twenty-eight. To Twenty-eight. Hit. That'll hit. Uh, and when that hit, I will apply bursting arrow to this because I think it says uh, anything yeah, within ten feet. Yeah, so everything else takes two d six, and that is. Automatic. Yep. So roll to hit. <clears throat> like you mean roll damage for that? Oh yeah, roll damage. Sorry. So uh, to this guy, he takes twelve, and okay. let me roll the two d six here. I'm just gonna do custom because the one on D and D Beyond is a little bit messed up. And then him and every and the four wolves or the three wolves and then the that other thing around him or actually does it reach ten feet? So it'll reach everybody but B Wolf B. Okay, yeah. So they'll all take just five. Yeah, you give me a minute. And they'll all take five piercing damage, right? Uh, they take force damage. And then the, the other guy will take the piercing again. All right. 
What's next? Is that it for your turn? I'll take my second attack. This time I will, uh, same guy. Um, I will use sharpshooter for this one. Um, I have it automatically done in D and D Beyond, so I don't need to minus anything. Like I customize the hit, so pull it normally. <laughs> A nine. <laughs> that will not do it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it for me. I'm gonna turn there. All right then. With that, air um, Esmeralda, she'll uh, drop her uh, longsword, wield her hand axe, and uh, get ready to jump down the ten feet uh, from the second floor to the first, and go charging out the front door and begin to attack. Uh, she pulls a rapier off of her left hip, so she's holding a rapier in her right hand. And, a, and an ornate hand axe in her left hand, and she gets out to the front door and immediately just begins uh, attacking the nearest enemies she can find. So she'll roll to hit once against the werewolf. will be an 11, and that'll miss. And once against the wolf will be an 18, that'll hit. For 9 piercing damage, or slashing from hand axe. Against Wolf A will be enough to kill it. And that'll be it for her turn. Leading to a couple of the wolves taking the opportunity to swarm her. And they'll both attack, and with pack tactics, they will get um, advantage. The first one's a nat 1, so that'll miss. And the second one's a 19, so it'll be a 23 to hit for 9 damage against Esmeralda. And the uh, the leader takes uh, the opportunity while she's distracted to uh, attack two times with these... He's got, like, long nails, but they're... Uh, they're, they're werewolf nails, so they're essentially claws, and he'll just try and rip into her with those. First one will be a 17, and the second will be an 18, so they'll both hit. For 8 plus 7 for 15 total damage. Now it's your turn, Dorlis. Oh, Esmeralda. Both will jump down as well. Uh, and then 15, 20, 25. Can he get over um, here? Um, From where he is standing, it is 10 feet down and then 5, 10. Oh, I he didn't get to because... here, but he... Yeah, Just because the you door wouldn't be able or anything. To move past her. Yeah, okay. you wouldn't be able to move past her. You could attack either the werewolf bee or wolf bee. Yeah. Um. Dorlis is going to raise his hand over Esmeralda's shoulder and uh, just look the the guy in the face and cast Sacred Flame. All right. Go ahead and roll to hit. Uh, it is the dexterity saving throw. Dex save against uh, the leader? Yes. Okay. It's going to be a 14. Uh, meets it, beats it. All right, so he takes half or he just misses? He just misses. All right, you have anything else for your turn? Um, And then... As a bonus action, uh, gonna cast Hex, raise his hand, and uh, actually in the same hand, like Black Icker is gonna form and shoot toward the leader and dissipate around him, uh, and that's gonna be on Dex as well. Okay. So he is he is hexed. Dex. It's gonna be a thirteen. Uh. 
It's, I believe it's in, there's no save. Oh, okay. He there's just no automatically, save. you just, he just give automatically minus hits. one D four to his, um, to his deck saves. Disadvantage. Disadvantage on deck saves. On, on ability then, checks made with that chosen ability. And then he takes like an extra 1d6 damage from your attacks, right? Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. All right. In that case, Artie, we're on to you. Artie, are you there, bud? Yes, I'll reach into my component pouch and pull out two ever-burning coals mm -hmm. and start rubbing them together so that they start to get really warm. And I'll cast Flaming Sphere uh, here. And the creatures within five feet of it uh, need to make deck saves. Hello. Sorry about that. For the leader, I was muted. Jesus Christ. For the leader, it's going to be... Uh... <clears throat> for the leader, it'll be an 11. For the werewolf, it'll be 5. And for the wolves, it'll be a 10, an 8, and a 19. Anything that... The 19 passes. Um, anything fell? that's not above 16 takes 10 damage. Okay. So that would kill this wolf um as well as this wolf it would harm greatly this wolf still standing though <clears throat> and it would also harm greatly the werewolf and the leader also takes and damage all right you have anything else for your turn um one saxon uh no all right then the werewolves take the opportunity to jump in where they can and attack he don't have pack tactics. Okay, so he'll make two attacks. One with its bite and one with its claw against Esmeralda. She's got an AC of 17. The first will be a 13, so that'll miss. The second will be a 10, so that'll miss. Move us on to our other werewolf. who will do the same thing. A 20 will hit. And a 6 will miss. So we're just rolling damage for the bite, which will deal 10 piercing damage against Esmeralda and take us to our last wolf's turn who doesn't have much of a position but he can attack from here and he will try to bite Esmeralda it'll be with pack tactics so it'll be a 15 and that'll miss and that'll take us back around to Emika it's your turn Okay, I will, uh, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you fine. Is there a way I can throw a fireball where it won't hit my allies? Um, fireball is a big area. That's a 20-foot space, right? If I remember correctly. Fireball, fireball. 150-foot um... range, 20-foot 
circle. So we are talking a 20 foot circle. So we are looking at that's 10 feet. This would be 20 feet. That's what your fireball would hit. So you could place it. Could you put it back here somewhere maybe where it will hit these four? Somewhere over here. That looks about right. If you were to place it there, centered on that point, you could drop it there and hit those four. Okay, now yeah, let's do that. All right, sounds good to me. Go ahead and roll to hit. Or no, it's a deck save, right? Yes, dexterity. Dexterity for one werewolf, two wolves, and the leader. And two of them. So we'll start the with the AC. leader. If you were playing video games, you would turn. The leader save is an 11. I only have one hand. The werewolf save is. A 10. And for our wolves, we have. A 17. And a 13. So what's the save? It's a 15. 15. So one wolf makes it. So wolf E makes it. And that's. It. Yeah, that's it. Everybody else takes full damage, so go ahead and roll the damage. Nice. 32, so those who pass only take 16. Wolf E is dead, even on half damage. Sweet. Nice job. And everybody else takes 32. That is a big number. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Give me just a minute. Wolf D... Where is Wolf D? He'll be dead, too. 32 is way more than enough. We got Cooked Doggy in here. 32 damage against the leader. All right. Uh, that's your action. Do you have a bonus action for me? Yeah. Is the leader looking at me? Uh, no. He's currently engaged with Esmeralda. Uh, damn it. I was going to flip him off. <laughs> <laughs> I could oh, appreciate that. That's my turn. All right. In that case, we're on to Eros. Also, right. don't think I didn't notice you named the arcane archer Eros. <laughs> all right, all right. Is, don't worry is about D, that. Is D gone, the wolf? Yes, D would be gone. You're right. Wheat. Sorry. No, no worries. Eros, it's your turn. So, same deal. Uh, I'm going to shoot regularly at this guy again. Uh, not sharpshooter. Okay. So, let's see here. 24. 24 will hit. And on that, I will add grasping arrow. Uh, so, it'll take an extra 2d6 poison. His speed is reduced by 10 feet. And uh, if, it move, if he moves at all... On each of his turns, he takes another 2d6 slashing damage. Or he can um, do an athletics check to remove them. All right. You said it's the arrow. Six damage so plus the 2d6. So roll me the 2d6. Yep. It goes to 11. For the... Okay. Yeah. So total, just 17 damage. And he takes another 1d6 if he moves? He takes 2d6 if he moves. Okay. All uh, right, that'll be it for your turn? Uh, no, one more attack. Uh, okay. Same deal. Going to shoot with Sharpshooter and just hope and pray. All right, go ahead and roll to hit. Okay, so 23, even with the minus 5. Uh, yep, that'll hit. And 21 damage on that. Wait, hold on. You said it's a 23 with the minus 5. All I'm seeing is a 1d20 plus 4. Yes, because norm. So I, this is what I was saying earlier. I have two longbows. One is customized to have a minus 5. So it only has a plus 4. Normally, I have a plus 9. Okay. So it's like okay. baked into the plus. It's a minus yep. 5 for the sharpshooter. Makes sense. All right. And same with the damage. So it's... um. It's got that plus 10 put into it. 
So, so 20 yeah, 21 more. damage. Okay. And yeah, that'll be that'll be my turn. Twenty one is enough to cut right through his heart and land the arrow in the ground behind him, and he'll fall over on it and die, leaving only a couple of wolves and werewolves left. Esmeralda's turn next, and she'll attack the same way she did last time. Once with her rapier, fourteen against the wolf, and once with her hand axe. 19 against the werewolf. Both will hit. So against the wolf, it will be 10 damage. That'll be enough to kill it. And the hand axe damage against the werewolf will just be 5. We're on to Dorlith. Uh, can Dorlith, uh, he still can't, can he move through Esmeralda? Mm, yes. Okay. Well. If she lets no. him move through her. I'm gonna say no, and this is just because of new knowledge. There are feats and, uh, racial traits that allow players to move through their, through occupied spaces. Um. And I was not aware of them before. And so I'm going to go ahead and change that ruling and probably say not unless you have something that allows you to. Okay, so I'm stuck here. You can't always, you can't always ask her to move, though. Is that going to take an action? Is it considered rough no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take more action. movement. What was that, Galen? I said, is it considered rough terrain and does it use more movement to go through that space? Or just... You no, just wouldn't be able to move through it at all. Oh, okay. Because there are things like, uh, I forget what it is, but like I, I know if you play Halfling certain gnomes and fairies and stuff, yep. you can move through half Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things okay. like that. No, that's cool. Um, seeing that the our friends above have been able to take out the majority of these guys, uh, Dorlis is going to take out uh, his silver rapier and stab at werewolf B. Okay, go ahead and roll to hit. Uh, an eight. Eight. That will not hit. Okay. You have anything else for your turn? Yep. He'll use his second attack uh, as uh, yeah, 23 to hit with same Silver Rapier. That'll be eight points of silver piercing damage. All right. Stabbing into into B. Uh, and the bonus action to shift that hex from that guy over to B, which I should have done before I attacked, but whatever. I didn't even think about it. So now B is hexed. Um, still disadvantage at dex. Okay. And then Dorlith will just hold tight. All right. Put this on to Artie. Okay, it's the one guy still standing close enough to the fireball. What was that? The fireball. Is oh yeah the, the fire, remaining the guys still standing close enough? Yeah, the flame sphere. Yes, A is. Okay. Jump for a save. It'd be a seven. Uh, seven fire damage. Nice. Right. All right. What else? Uh, does a thirteen hit? A thirteen against the werewolf? Yes. Okay. Eight damage. Uh, from the crossbow. All right. That'll be enough to kill him, leaving one werewolf. Um, 
and then with uh, sharpshooter feet, I'm going to uh, take aim, steady against the wall and the uh, window frame, and shoot with a 21 minus 5. So, 16. That'll hit. And he takes 18, 18 damage. All right. All right. You have anything else? No. Okay. Brings us on to the werewolf who will attack Miss Esmeralda. First one will be an 18, that'll hit. And the second will be a 21, that'll hit. So we have seven damage plus eight, that's 15. Against Esmeralda. And that'll make her unconscious. That'll drop her to zero hit points. How is that werewolf looking? Rough. Okay, so I'm going to rebuke the violent. Okay. For him. I need him to make a wisdom saving throw. The two. He fails, so he takes... Uh, the amount that he just dealt in radiant damage. Nice. It'll be 15. Is it on one attack or the entire turn? Uh, immediately after an attacker uh, makes an attack. So, so one attack. So the last one I think was eight. Yep. Yep. And that'll bring us to Emika to start us off on round three. Sorry, this is one guy. Yep. I guess I will. Um, I guess I will cast. Um, What does it look like? Who wants to kill us, though? Uh, he seems to want to fight to the death. But I mean, it, it doesn't. That well, doesn't mean he wouldn't listen if you tried to reason with him. Okay, can I cast calm emotions? You certainly may try. Is there a save? Is that charisma fifteen. Yeah. It's Christmas sailing through. All right, then. It's a five. He doesn't make it. So. Okay, so you want to make it indifferent to all of you so that it won't attack anymore? Yeah. All right, sounds good to me. Give me just a minute. Well, he stops attacking and very suddenly uh, takes a seat on the grass and just begins relaxing and uh, sort of ignoring the fact that you all are even there. Mm. Oh, I want to I, I want to walk downstairs. Okay, and do what? Oh yeah, we're not an initiative, so you can move wherever you'd like, guys. I want to move downstairs, and I want to wave at him. Alright. I'll move you there, I'll put her there. And what do you want to say to him? Um... Do you know what's in this wagon? He shakes his head no without speaking. Uh, 
um, I'm not good at interrogating. Do you guys want to ask him anything? Does he speak common? Are you asking me or? Yeah, but sorry, I'm asking you. Um, because we've dealt with werewolf guess... before, and I don't remember them actually speaking, so I don't know. Well, I think that's a better question for him than me. Yeah. <laughs> True. Why are you after Esmeralda? What has she done that's worthy of death? He says. He, he shrugs his shoulders and goes, I, uh, I don't have a grudge. Just, uh, he drew the ire of Lord Strahd, so. And this is my job. Oh, sounds like a shit job. <laughs> what are you getting well, paid? He says, I get paid in meat. What's your favorite kind of meat? Deer. Your favorite kind of meat is bear? Deer. Deer. Oh. The, 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 the muscular ones. The ones that are big and strong and fleshy and tasty, but not strong enough to fight back when you attack them. Well, I um, mean, we could get real deer. What the heck? Why are you looking for a star? That guy yeah. sounds like a punk. Because he rules everything here. It's the best way to survive is to be on his side. I look at the two people I met earlier. Is that is that true? What was that? Um, I, I'm looking at Artie. And door left, and I'm like, oh, is that, is that true? Well, he is. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, JR, I'm going to go ahead and have my raven do a, a, a more confident wide circle scouting to see if there's any animals in the area. Yeah, what's his range? I think... Uh, it's, he's not like a familiar, he can go as far as he wants to, I just can't cast through him, um, yeah. unless he's 120 feet range. It returns after a moment, bringing reports of no nearby activity, although it does report that miles to the southeast, uh, there is a blue dragon terrorizing a village. Okay, I'll sit on that for for a few minutes while we do this. Uh, while he's doing that, I so the real reason I'm here is because I want to get stories, you know, because I'm an entertainer. So I am going to take out my parchment and ink, and I'm going to ask for his autograph. He shrugs his shoulders and takes the uh, takes the the feather and dips it in the ink. With, his, with, with a pair of little claws, he pinches it in between and gently scribbles down a bit of a uh, of a signature. You, you can't read it because it's so messy and terribly written, but there it is. Can you do like a paw print on there too? Just so people believe me. He nods and uh, puts his entire paw just this huge hand inside your little jar of ink and slaps it down on the parchment, uh, leaving a bit of a mess around the initial uh, print, but leaving a nice paw print there as a uh, souvenir. No way. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think this woman is dying. Um, not much I can do about that, but maybe one of you wants to help. Oh, no, I'm perfectly fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, not I'm talking about you, friend. Uh, this woman down, laying down on the ground who's currently unconscious. Oh, no. Uh, Esmer yeah, yeah. Elsmeralda is uh, still bleeding out because she is uh, dying. 
Right. You moved yeah. her away, <laughs> so I kind of forgot about it. Indeed. <clears throat> uh, Doroth will lean down, be like, Esmeralda, I really can't, don't think I can do this anymore today. And he'll rub his hands together and, like, uh, put it, one hand over her, her eyes and one into, like, hold her hand and uh, use the last bit of lay on hands uh, that he has, just five hit points to bring her back. All right. Now we'll bring her up to five hit points, and she very suddenly, like, like for a moment, you're afraid that it might not have worked because she doesn't move, but she very, very suddenly catches her breath and sits up hard. She goes, <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh, 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 that was, that was rough. So, bedroom, there's two passages next to the... Uh, welcome back. Uh, for the second time, I suppose, today. She takes your hand and sort of gestures that she wants you to help her stand up. Oh, yeah, here you go. Uh, yeah. When she, uh, when she gets up, she pats you on the back and says, Thank you for sparing your magic on me. That was, uh, not the, not my finest moment. It happens. Uh, we have one of them here, and he'll gesture towards B. They're, they're fine, they're indifferent to us. Oh, well, who has a name? I don't know what it says on the autograph, but who has a name? Not B. Do you want to know what it is? Um, can I make it up? I mean, you can. <laughs> his name is Steven. Indeed, his name is Steven. Esmeralda, do you want to go? Do you want to talk to Steven? I'm making rations with him. As you're talking about him, the werewolf pipes up and goes, Why are you calling me Steven? My name is Hope. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. You guys, you just don't listen. I mean, seriously. Hey, already, I think Emiko will get along with Alora pretty well. I'll give a little chuckle. The, the werewolf starts rambling. He says, he says, and please don't make fun of me about it. I, I, I know, I know, uh, I know what you're going to say. Everybody says the same thing. Hope is a girl's name, but, but, I, and I don't even know how you guess this. I've been going by Steven for years, but how would you know that? That doesn't even make sense. Well, I may have read your leader's mind before he, uh, had a heart attack. And he said something about Steven eats all the best deer meat, and that's why we hate him. That's why he joined our group. Don't you remember? <laughs> Carol? K Carol had a heart attack? You you mean yeah. him being dead? That has nothing to do with the, the hole in his chest? The very arrow-shaped hole in his chest? I'm telling you, that's exactly what it was. That was a needle that we were trying to save his life. You were just sitting in the grass. I think you were in shock, honestly. You've lost a oh. lot of blood. Okay, go ahead and roll me deception. <laughs> yeah. Can you roll with advantage because I'm feeding him? Yes. Oh, fuck, she doesn't need it. Dear God. Yeah, fuck it, she doesn't need it. He goes, uh, okay. And um, at that moment, Eros is standing off to the side gently nudging the leader's body to cover up the arrow that he fell on after it cut straight <laughs> through him. Um, uh, but uh, the werewolf doesn't notice and he goes, anyway, uh, what did you want to ask me? What, what What's up? What? Emika, this is a really cool trick. Uh, how long does it last? I look worriedly, worriedly at the food that's dwindling. 
Honestly, I have no idea. I just um, there. If I rem- do it, and then I will. Yeah, let me read it. But if I remember correctly, there's not really a no. Time I don't. Know. It's a minute. Is, is it? Yeah, it's oh, a okay. it's a so it's a minute. It makes them um. It makes the target indifferent, um, and the indifference ends if they're attacked or harmed by a spell. Um, the creature can become hostile again if they wish, but they are free to do anything else if they don't wish, so. And, uh, it's been more than a minute and he hasn't begun attacking you yet, so. That's a good sign. That means you should join our team. Heroes will walk up to the werewolf and say, So, um, fellow furry fellow, you know, me and you, same kind of thing. Uh, you look He doesn't even let you get through his sentence before he starts growling at you. Uh, That seems a little hasty. Now, I I don't know why you're getting angry at me, but He takes their mood. He likes their mood. I don't think I have any, but I will find you one, if you'd like. He says, he says, I wouldn't take food from the likes of you, filthy straight cat. Now that, that hurts my feelings a little bit, but that's okay. You're, you know, having a moment. Your friend passed away from a very untimely heart attack. Um, if I got the deer but gave it to my friend, could they give it to you? He thinks for a minute and he goes, hmm, a good meal would really soothe my heart in these trying times. And I have a proposition for you. You see this wagon here? I would very much like to go inside. And you look quite strong. Maybe you could <clears throat> open the door in a slightly forceful way. He says, and uh, what do I get out of it? As we had mentioned, some deer meat, the finest I can find. So uh, if I open the door, you're going to get me some good deer meat? Wait, I I look at Doorless. We have a, a tribe of werewolves that could provide you a place to sleep and maybe a new pack. He says, uh-uh, uh-uh. As soon as this wears off, I'm going back to being a regular Barovian. All this mess is enough for me. Mm-hmm. Not quite sure that's how lycanthropy like, like works, my friend, but, you know, if that's what you wish, um, I'll help you any way I can, which is a lie. So if you need me to roll deception, I yes, will. Yes, go ahead and go ahead and roll me deception. <laughs> oh my god, cats in the I roll my eyes. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. He says. He says. Well, all right, but uh, if you're lying, I I am going to go back to being abandoned, and I'm going to make sure to come find you first. Uh, it's a deal, then. Great. <laughs> Good to hear. He gets up off the ground and brushes off the the dirt and grass off of his um his fur before turning around and going and uh, jiggling the door handle a little bit, messing with it and trying to see if he can get it open without trying to kick it down or anything. As he's doing that, can I turn around to Esmeralda and say, hey, do you have a key to that wagon? (laughs) He says uh, she's still getting herself together and mulling over the the last few hours of her life. Uh, And she goes, the wagon? What? What a... What about it? What? You want a, a key? No, I, I don't... I don't have the... Wait, y'all are trying to go inside the wagon? 
and um it's been her lifelong dream as well. At, as she says this, she becomes <laughs> frantic Uh-oh. and um Hope the werewolf goes, It's all right, guys, I got this under control. <laughs> and he throws his shoulder into the door as hard as he can. Um and without speaking, um, without speaking further, Esmeralda open her eyes open wide and she gets up and takes off running to the northwest. Uh Dorleth will follow immediately after. That's not a good sign. Um what? <laughs> uh I don't know, just run. You got it, you got it. Just keep slamming that door. Uh Eros will actually stay to see what happens. <laughs> but Ari, what will you do? Will you stay or will you run? <laughs> uh I'm definitely gonna go this far at least. Okay. Eros, will you stay or will you run? I will stay, but I'll sort of be peeking around the corner from <laughs> inside the tower, basically. Okay. And Emika, Keep going, what friend. I am actively cheering on Arma's werewolf friend. You got this, man. You got this. Cool. Give me just a moment, please. Under his breath, Eris will say, hmm, I think I may have um, made a mistake. <laughs> Emika begins running to the southeast. Artie, Dorleth, and Esmeralda run to the west and the northwest, and Eros hesitates for a moment uh, before deciding to start stepping towards the tower, uh, but that moment of hesitation proved to be uh, a moment too long as as you can hear the sound of thunder and a blinding bolt of lightning comes crashing down on the cart, just leveling it, blasting it to splinters. Um, Eros, roll me constitution save. Oh boy, all right. Is Emika out of the AOE? Emika is fine, yes. A nine. A nine. Shit. Okay, give me a minute. Well, it was great playing with you. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I'm gonna roll up a new character real quick. Uh, see you guys in a moment. Hello, Eros. I hope you know uh, there is a character shoot for Steven if you want to play Steven. Yeah, that, I think Steven might be dead as well. So. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't don't yeah, worry about don't worry about fine. Steven. Cause... Steven is fine. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry about Steven because thirty six lightning damage later, you and Steven um have both been just about reduced to ash. There is no remains of Steven. And and you, your your mane is singed and frayed and sticking up like Albert Einstein. Oh, oh my god. I am gonna run over Steven. Really? Steven, That's who Steven you go is, to first. <laughs> Steven is gone. There is no Steven anymore. Oh. Wow. No, not Steven. Did he get the door open? <laughs> well, he did, but there is no longer any door or anywhere wow. the door led to. All that remains is about a 15 foot wide crater where um, oh. where the purple cart used to stand. With just dark, burned, singed ground. Oh boy! Am I dying? I- I'm going to cast the healing word on on arrows. Esmeralda runs back over. You being so dramatic, arrows. Where's Steven going? It was at this moment him? that he knew <laughs> he fucked oh, up. God. Esmeralda runs back over, and she goes. Why, why would you ever do that? That, why? It's just, it's just a wagon. Didn't expect that. Uh, and, and Esmeralda is, is just like begging for an explanation. She goes, do you go around knocking down the doors to all wizarding, wizarding monster hunters carts? This was so, oh my God. Steven is dead. Look what you did. 
actually. I think Stephen was going to live a good life after this anyway, so I... As for Robert, his name wasn't Stephen. I hate to break it to you. It was actually help. Esmeralda looks puzzled for a minute and goes, Isn't Hope a girl's name? Yes, it is. I agree. I actually knew one, I knew one other person named Hope, and it was actually a male. Farewell, Stupid name, Stephen. A werewolf, I'll say. A Goliath barbarian, no doubt. She goes, she goes, uh, over to what remains of the wagon, which is not much more than a smoldering mess of splinters. Um, and she she goes, oh, oh my goodness, all of Rudolph's weaponry and supplies. Oh, he's not going to be happy. He knew exactly what was in this wagon and you didn't tell us before. She pulls out a piece of parchment from her pocket and begins reading. Um, it's an inventory of some kind, um, signed by Rudolf Van Richten himself. She explains that uh, when he left, uh, when he left me here, he said he he only brings death upon those he loves. So he left me this tower and left the wagon behind, telling me to to leave it here as a trap and only open it in emergencies if I need the supplies inside. And he. Uh, he left me this list of what's in there. Oh. She hands you a um she hands you a list and I will copy it to the chat now for you. Please don't let there be silver weapons on that list. There's a bow of any kind, that's the only thing that would upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. There is oh, inside was a wooden trunk that held a battle axe, a flail, a morning star, and a light crossbow, a wardrobe with three sets of fine clothes and some traveler's clothes, a climber's kit, a disguise kit, a healer's kit, a poisoner's kit, 200 gold pieces worth of valuables, three sets of manacles, a shovel, a holy symbol, three vials of holy water, antitoxin, 50 feet of coil hemp and rope, a tinderbox, a steel mirror, a sharpened wooden stake, a spyglass, a map of Barovia, a charred page from Rudolf Van Richten's journal, and two third level spell scrolls. I don't like Steven wow. anymore. And I I would trade all of that for Steven. Yeah, are there any uh are there any remains of, of anything our friend? of Steven? No. Yeah. I mean maybe a few <laughs> singed tufts of hair are settling <laughs> to the ground, but uh nothing really material. I mean, just press the digitation to get a gust to take that away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that's... <laughs> Is there anything else that's intact? Literally Nothing. anything from that list. Nothing. <laughs> All right, folks. I'm, I'm going to walk away now, and you can choose whether to go with me or not, and I would understand if you don't. I'm just going to walk in a direction and see what happens. Uh, so, uh, I will follow you. Which direction did my raven come back with that message? From the southeast. Uh, so basically right. the rest of Barovia, because you're all the way in the far northeast, or northwest. Is the mist still surrounding us? Good question. Go ahead and roll me perception. Perception. No, it's not bad. 17. The mist has retreated, allowing a path down to the southeast. Well, uh, we were never here. Esmeralda, you coming along? She says, she says, no, but I, I need to go find Rudolph in Valaki. I need to find out what's next. But Wait, before we part ways, you mentioned... Uh, Irina was taken by dragon ghosts? Mm -hmm. Something? Yeah. They said they worshipped a, an ancient, long-dead silver dragon. I don't know. Something about them, but they said they served Lord Strahd above all and then took her off. I, uh... I can't go get her myself. You should probably deal with that. Do you know where we should go? 
I'll go ahead and mention the dragon at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, she says they mentioned a castle called card called Argon Vostold, which um is unsettling because it matches the name of a legend of Barovia, an ancient silver dragon that used to fight dark forces in the region, named Argon Vost. Did Artie, did you speak up about a dragon? Was that you? Yeah, I I, I mentioned um that my vision, the shared vision of the bird. Which mm. dir um I'm sorry. Esmeralda would ask, which direction is the dragon? Uh southeast about about a couple hundred miles. He says <sighs> Perfect. That sounds like Argon Vostholt. And she uh, takes her hand, head out of her hands, turns to Dorlith and says, Good seeing you again. Enjoy that dragon. And starts walking off towards the, um, towards the east. Oh, Esmeralda, one more thing. I would implore you not to tell who, him who was the one who destroyed the wagon. Please. She goes, she goes, does he even know you? Nope, but I don't want him to. So, <laughs> like to keep it that way. She nods and goes, uh-huh. Whatever you say. And continues walking, leaving the four of you standing out in the middle of the road in front of the tower with a destroyed tower, a lot of dead wolves and werewolves, and uh, a crater in the place of the wagon that you uh, that was there when you arrived. You now have your next objective, retrieving Irina Kolyana from Argon Vostholt, whatever it takes. She seems to be the most important person in Barovia when it comes to stopping Lord Strahd. And I'm with go that, the power, clean up the grease with rest of the station. Indeed. And with that, I think... That is a perfect place to stop for today. I still Can I approach? Esmeralda ruined all the supplies. <laughs> Can I approach? Yes, I definitely what was that, uh, Galen? Uh, nothing. Eros was talking first. Okay, Eros? Well, he was just making a joke. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna approach our two new friends and, and uh, Having my reservations waived, um, I seem a lot more cheerful, and um, I comment on their capabilities, and uh, I take interest in um, the calm emotions, and say that was a really quick thought. He nods. Okay. And Eros, I'm admiring your bow. Does shoot well, huh? Oh. Okay. Well, if I would like to formally I... apologize about destroying this, <laughs> she mentions the crater. <laughs> eh. It happens. It probably would have, I don't know, makes this place look a little more. I don't know, distinguished, I guess. In Sparovia, it's kind of a weird place anyway. Well, that could have been me, and I pull my thieves tools back out of my boat and toss them and then put them back. It was a sign, Artie. It was Steven's time to go. I saved you. I saved you. Yeah. Again, though, uh, Barovia's lost all hope. Uh, uh-huh. 
<laughs> Girls will chuckle and slap Artie on the back. His name was Steven. How come we can't get that right? So disrespectful. I thought you just said his name was Hope. Did yeah, I? Never mind. I don't think I did. You're probably right. <laughs> well, uh, Irina is is uh, important to Strahd. And when we first met, when we first got here, the party that I was a part of, uh, we found out we tried to get her uh, away so he couldn't find her. And, uh, yeah, it's not good. Not good at all. Harris, this is your time to say something, Harris. Oh, uh, I couldn't think of anything witty, so. Um. You go, Emika. You you have a way with words as well. Say something that's, cheerful. Yeah, that's you know. Uh, I'm sorry about your girlfriend, but we will find her. Ah. <laughs> uh... I hope we do. And Doroth will begin to to walk by, go towards the southeast. <laughs> Sweet. There's will follow him for sure. And me too. And I look absolutely thrilled that I got an autograph and a paw print from a werewolf. <laughs> Love you.